distinguished speaker. Yesterday, Back to Equity, the NUJ, Musicians Union and the Writers Guild wrote a joint letter to the Secretary of State urging her to reconsider the sale of Channel 4 and in doing so protect the jobs of thousands of freelancers and the livelihoods of at least 60 production companies. It's here that I have to declare a significant personal interest, Mr Deputy Speaker, as my partner is a freelance documentary maker who, as well as working for the big streamers like Netflix, is currently directing a project for Channel 4. And that gives me some insight into exactly what is at stake and which projects may never have been made without the existence of this hugely important British institution. Of course, like many others, I was addicted to Brookside when growing up but I also learned so much more about the wider world and the plight and lives of those I didn't encounter in my daily life. What we watch on television has the power to change and shape our lives, to teach us about places and people we don't know, from the very funny and sometimes jaw-dropping insights brought to us by Come Dine With Me, to the 2018 episode of Dispatches made by Avanti, which revealed the homeless shelter residents employed by upmarket London retailers yet unable to afford to rent a home. As well as groundbreaking documentaries such as <coughs> Fasama and truly global news which covers stories that others don't show us, Channel 4 and its filmmaking wing of Film 4 have made so many astonishing dramas and films we all know and love. We will all have our favourites and those dramas and scripts that stay with us. Slumdog Millionaire, The Favourite, It's a Sin, White Teeth, Indian Summers, and those stars whose names are now so familiar to us, Dev Patel, Olivia Coleman, Sasha Baron Cohen, Jonathan Ross, Julian Clary, to name just a few. And the comedy, as has just been mentioned, it has to be worth saving the home of Father Ted, the IT crowd, phone shop, and Statlet's flats, and drop the dead donkey. I also realized, as a younger woman, that even women could get involved in comedy. Who knew? Absolutely, Smack the Pony, Melon Sue, Dairy Girls, these are all part now of our cultural heritage, reflecting the best and often the most ridiculous and eccentric parts of British life. But Channel 4 has always shown us our global connections too, and not shied away from controversy or honesty about the less proud parts of our nation's history. As an institution started by Mrs Thatcher, and an incredibly successful British business owned by its viewers, Channel 4 deserves our pride and our praise. As pioneers of programming for previously overlooked or forgotten groups, bringing the Paralympics into every home, the pink triangle season, the undateables, there truly is no other comparable broadcaster. The government has looked at this idea before and changed their minds, and there is absolutely no shame in doing so again if the Secretary of State listens to the voices of those creatives, content, content makers, advertisers, unions and the British public who overwhelmingly say they don't want this. As a successful and popular business currently costing the taxpayer nothing at all, but bringing enjoyment, enrichment and employment to so many, let's think again. We should be proud that when other companies such as Netflix are under huge financial pressure, Channel 4 is thriving. It should be preserved as something unique and influential, a showcase for Britain's creative best. Thank you. Jesse Norman.